Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. And before we start with our headlines, Rajya Sabha TV would like to make an appeal to all its viewers to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. Wear a mask, wash your hands and face regularly and maintain physical distancing while stepping outside. Remember that these simple precautions are all that it takes to defeat the pandemic. And now it's time for the headlines. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu to meet flow leaders on the 31st of January for smooth conduct of Upper House Business Advisory Committee to meet on the 29th of January. Union Home Minister Amit Shah chairs high-level meeting on violence in Delhi. Delhi Police Commissioner tells media 394 policemen were injured in the attack. Names farmer leaders who made provocative speeches. Farmer leaders' trade charges over violence during tractor rally on Republic Day in Delhi. Two organizations say they are ending the agitation. Government issues new unlock guidelines, more exemptions allowed including free interstate and intrastate movement of people and goods, swimming pools permitted for all. Central government approves increase in minimum support price for Copra, decision to benefit farmers in 12 coastal states. Well, our top focus on the bulletin this evening. In view of the budget session of parliament, Rajya Sabha chairman M. Venkaya Naidu has called a meeting of leaders of all parties in the upper house on Sunday. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla is also expected to hold an all-party meeting on the 29th of this month. The government has also convened an all-party meeting on the 30th of this month to seek support of political parties to ensure smooth conduct of business in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The meeting will be held virtually and will be chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Well, the meetings will be held to ensure smooth functioning of both houses of parliament during the session. The budget session will begin on the 29th of this month with President Ramnath Kovind's address to the joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament. Seating arrangements for members have been made in Central Hall, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha chambers and their galleries. Union budget will be presented on February 1st. In view of COVID-19 pandemic, the Rajya Sabha will function from 9am to 2pm and the Lok Sabha will function from 4pm to 9pm. The first part of the session will include or rather conclude on the 15th of February, while the second part of the session will begin on the 8th of March and will conclude on the 8th of April. Well, two farmer unions on Wednesday announced their withdrawal from the ongoing farmers' protest on the outskirts of Delhi. Both the farmers' unions, Rashtriya Kisan Mazdoor Sangathan and Bharatiya Kisan Union, condemned the violence that broke out during the tractor march in New Delhi on Republic Day and said that they can't continue with the protest in this manner. Announcing the move, Farmers' leader V.M. Singh said he has nothing to do with the protest led by Bharatiya Kisan Union leader Rakesh uh, Tiket, who has been named in an FIR. Another Farmers' leader, Banu Pratap Singh, said he too is withdrawing from the protest and is pained to see the violence in Delhi. हम ना शहीद कराने आए हैं ना पिटवाने आए हैं लोगों को यहां पर मैंने पहले भी कहा था 2 अक्टूबर 2018 की इसका जो है ये फिर से वापस रिपीट नहीं होना चाहिए जो रिपीट हुआ है उन लोगों के साथ आज हम बैठ के आगे आंदोलन नहीं चला सकते जिनकी दिशा अलग हो जिनकी दिशा अपनी हो मुद्दों के साथ ना हो मुझे बता देना राकेश टिकैत पांच छह मीटिंगों में गए उन्होंने उत्तर प्रदेश के गन्ना किसानों की बात एक बार भी उठाई रेट की उठाई पुरानी पेमेंट की उठाई डेढ़ गुना लागत के दाम में कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग में उठाई किस चीज में उठाई धान का रेट की बात करी किसकी बात करी 
और हम केवल यहाँ से सपोर्ट देते रहे और वहां पर कोई नेता बनते रहे वो हमारा काम नहीं है आज बड़े दर्द के साथ मैं कहना चाहता हूं आंदोलन खड़ा करने का काम 26 27 में दिल्ली लाने का काम वीएम सिंह का था पर इसलिए नहीं आए थे कि देश को अपने आप को 26 जनवरी को सबको बदनाम करने का काम हमने किया इसलिए हम नहीं आए थे यहां पर हम आए हैं केवल और केवल अपने जब वापस जाए धान का पूरा रेट मिले गन्ने का पूरा रेट मिले हमारा ब्याज मिले और हम पे एक भी केस ना लगे खत जाने के बाद हमारा निर्णय स्पष्ट है वीएम सिंह राष्ट्रीय किसान मजदूर संगठन इस आंदोलन को यहीं पर ही अलविदा हमने ये घोषणा की है कि हम कल के कुकर्मों की वजह से जिन लोगों ने लाल किले पर दूसरा झंडा फहराया उनका विरोध करते हैं जिन लोगों ने पुलिस को मारा उनका विरोध करते हैं जिन्होंने उद्धवता की उनका विरोध करते हैं इस दुखी से दुखी हैं, इसलिए आज अपने इस धरने को समाप्त करते हैं और भारतीय किसानों भानु पूरे देश के किसानों के साथ हम सक्षम हैं, किसानों के हित में लड़ाई लड़ती रहेगी लड़ती रहेंगे Meanwhile, a day after the farmers' tractor rally turned violent in Delhi, Union Home Minister Amit Shah on Wednesday took stock of the security situation and measures taken to ensure peace in the city. Union Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla and senior officers of the Ministry of Home Affairs and Delhi Police attended the meeting. Shah was also briefed by the officials about the steps taken to ensure peace in the national capital. The central government has already deployed around 4,500 paramilitary troops to assist the Delhi Police in maintaining law and order. Well, the Delhi police on Wednesday filed an FIR against several prominent farmer leaders following the violence in the national capital on Republic Day. Addressing the media, Delhi Police Commissioner S N Srivastava said that over 25 criminal cases have been registered in connection with the incident. He said 19 accused have been arrested so far, while 50 people have been detained. Srivastava added that 394 police personnel sustained injuries in the violence. Multiple videos and CCTV footage are being scanned to identify those involved in uh, the violence, and strict action will be taken against the culprits. Delhi Police has registered cases of violation of lawful uh, directions, rioting, damage to public property, and assault on a public servant with deadly weapons. Up to Delhi Police, 25 se jada. क्रिमिनल केस रजिस्टर किया है और जैसा कि मैंने बताया है कि सीसीटीवी और वीडियो फुटेज के से हम फेशियल रिकॉग्निशन सिस्टम से पहचान की जा रही है एक चीज सबको बतलाना चाहता हूं कि कोई भी कल्पेट जिसकी पहचान होती है और जिसकी समूलियत पाई जाती है उसको छोड़ा नहीं जाएगा No one will be spared. जो भी फार्मर्स लीडर्स हैं और उनकी शमूलियत पाई जाती है उनके खिलाफ कानूनी कार्रवाई की जाएगी राष्ट्र के सम्मान और सुरक्षा में दिल्ली पुलिस किसान संगठनों से पूछताछ करेगी और जो भी कठोर कार्रवाई करनी पड़ेगी वो करेगी Well, Union Culture and Tourism Minister Pralad Patel on Wednesday visited the Red Fort to take stock of the damage caused by the section of farmers who stormed the monument and hoisted the flag of the Sikhs there. The minister has sought a report on the incident. During the minister's tour, one could see vandalized metal detector gate and a ticket counter and broken shards of glass at the premises of the Red Fort. these are 173 monuments in delhi protected under the archaeological survey of india it includes unesco world heritage sites red fort humayun's tomb and qutub minar lal qila ka bhraman kiya hai aur maine do nirdesh diye hain tatkal report banayi jaye aur wo grah mantale ko sopi jaye aur dusra ki fir तत्काल हो क्योंकि ए एस आई के मिस मानूमेंट में लेयर्स हैं हमारे अपने कैटेगरी के हिसाब से तो इसलिए मैंने कहा है कि अभी ये तैयारी प्रशासनिक अधिकारी कर लें
ताकि उस आधार पर एफ आई आर सुनिश्चित हो सके कि हमको कितनी एफ आई आर करनी है दो ही फैसले आज हमने किए हैं रिपोर्ट आने के बाद फिर बाकी चीजें स्पष्ट हो सकेंगी Mean while in a decision that will help boost income of farmers the union cabinet has approved increase in the minimum support price of copra for 2021 season the government has approved an increase in the msp of milling copra by 375 rupees from 2020 to 10335 rupees per quintal the msp for ball copra has been increased by 300 rupees to 10600 per quintal for 2021 season The declared MSP ensures to return of 51.87 percent of milling copra and 55.76 percent for ball copra over the All India Weighted Average Cost of Production. The new MSP for copra will impact the farmers of 12 coastal states. The approval is based on recommendations of the Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices. we have decided to hmm. increase the msp hmm. of milling copra as well as ball copra so we have increased it by 52% over and above the cost of production that these benefits and guarantees price to millions of farmers engaged in copra production in 12 coastal states particularly and on all the coastal states the copra the market price also becomes more than what government has declared and therefore farmer gets more price than the msp also let us now go back to the story that we had brought to you a short while ago about the chairman of the rajya sabha reviewing the preparations for the ensuing budget session which is to slated to begin from the 29th of january which is friday he held a meeting with the secretary general of the rajya sabha and other senior officials to talk about what kind of preparations uh, need to be made really for the budget session and to talk to tell us more about this we have with us right now our correspondent kriti mishra kriti uh, take us through the details of the meeting kriti if you can hear me take us through the details of the meeting what was the outcome it seems like we have some kind of a technical issue there with the line with uh, kriti we'll try and get uh, that line going uh, as soon as possible so that we can get the details of the meeting itself yes, kriti if you can hear me yes prime please take me take us through the details of the meeting what transpired what what, what was the outcome of the meeting between the chairman the uh, secretary general of the rajya sabha and other senior officials well frank uh, chairman of rajya sabha and venkaiah naidu he held a meeting with the secretary general of the rajya sabha secretariat and senior officers of the secretariat he reviewed the preparations made for the ensuing budget session of rajya sabha which is the 253rd session of the rajya sabha and during the meeting he discussed the seating arrangements made for the members of the rajya sabha in the lok sabha chamber the rajya sabha chamber and its galleries following the mandatory social distancing norms of 6 feet in view of the covid-19 pandemic he also expressed concern about the health of the members he also inquired about the other covid-19 protocol measures being taken by the secretariat he also said uh, that uh, all the members must follow the covid-19 guidelines very strictly he also emphasized that members should be taken to ensure smooth functioning of the house following the guidelines he emphasized that apart from the members and the parliamentary officers and staff the covid test should be made mandatory for the personal staff of the ministers the members and the officers of the ministry who come to parliament during the session in connection with the official business and he was also informed by the other uh, officials that necessary arrangements for covid test of members and parliamentary staff have been made in the parliament house premises and necessary instructions have been issued to various ministries through the cabinet secretariat for the covid test a very important point here frank 
that he has also he was informed the chairman was informed by the officials that all the state chief secretaries have been asked to give priority for the rt pcr test of members of parliament and the officers uh, have also been reminded and the chief secretaries have been reminded to give uh, to give this priority for the testing uh, facility of the members remember frank risk mitigation and protection of the members that has been the uppermost concern of the chairman ahead of the 253rd session of the rajya sabha he has also asked the secretary general to establish contact with all the members to ensure uh, that the covid test is done and also uh, the members have been requested that they must send uh, their covid test results whether negative or positive or through a designated email to avoid any inconvenience at the time of entry into the parliament house during the session so these were the details over to you frank all right priti mishra will have to leave to that thank you so much for taking us through those details moving on now prime minister narendra modi on wednesday chaired the meeting of the 35th edition of uh, pragati the ict based multimodal platform for proactive governance and timely implementation involving central and state governments In the meeting, ten agenda items were taken for review, including nine projects and one program. During the interaction, the Prime Minister also reviewed the Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushti uh, Parijojana. The Prime Minister directed all the officials to ensure expeditious resolution of issues hindering infrastructure projects. Time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Five million subscribers. One million subscribers in less than ten months. Over seventeen million hours of content watched online. RS TV, one of the fastest growing YouTube channel. Five million subscribers. The count is on. back you're watching rajya sabha television this is news tonight i'm frank rausen pereira well prime minister narendra modi will address the ongoing world economic forums davos dialogue on thursday via video conferencing the davos dialogues agenda marks the launch of the world economic forums great reset initiative in the post covid world the prime minister will be speaking on the fourth industrial revolution using technology for the good of humanity which will be attended by more than 400 top industry leaders from across the globe The theme this year is the Great Reset, representing World Economic Forum's commitment to jointly and urgently build the foundations of the global economic and social system to ensure a more equitable, fair, sustainable, and resilient future. Union Minister Narendra Singh Tomar took part today in the discussion on the situation of food. उत्पादन और उत्पादकता के लिए हम आर एन डी पर भी बल दे रहे हैं और हमारी कोशिश है कि फसल कटाई के बाद उसको प्रबंधित ठीक प्रकार से किया जा सके अवसंरचना के लिए आत्मनिर्भर भारत के पैकेज में एक लाख करोड़ रुपए की व्यवस्था की गई है इसके माध्यम से हम अधोसंरचना बना सके Well, Goa Legislative Assembly congratulated Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the COVID-19 management in India on Wednesday. The house also commended the vaccine makers in the country and said that the country as well as the state of Goa managed to ensure recovery of majority of coronavirus patients. Goa Chief Minister Pramod Sawant also assured to fulfill the demand of government jobs to family members of freedom fighters in the state. Speaking in the state legislative assembly, Sawant told the house that the issue would be resolved by March 31st this year. In West Bengal, a two-day special session of the legislative assembly began on Wednesday. First day's session was adjourned after making obituary references of 14 dignitaries. Tributes were paid to football legend Diego Maradona, film star or film actor Soumitra Chattopadhyay, former Union Minister Jaswant Singh, former Deputy Speaker of State uh, Dr. Sukumar Hansda, 
along with other sitting and former MP and MLAs of the state who passed away recently. The Ministry of Home Affairs on Wednesday issued new guidelines for surveillance, containment and caution of COVID-19. The guidelines will be effective from the 1st of February and will remain in force up to 28th of February. The ministry allowed cinema halls and theatres to operate with higher capacity, while swimming pools have been permitted for use by all. The centre has permitted all activities outside containment zones. It said social, religious, sports, uh, entertainment, educational, cultural and religious gatherings have already been permitted up to a maximum of 50% of the hall capacity. Persons above 65 years of age, persons with comorbidities, pregnant women and children below the age of 10 years are advised to take necessary precautions. Over 23.28 lakh healthcare workers have been vaccinated for COVID-19 across the country so far. On Wednesday, nearly 3 lakh people were vaccinated through 5,308 sessions across 28 states and union territories. In all, 41,599 vaccine sessions have been held so far. सारे देश में अब तक 23 लाख 28 हजार 789 लोगों को कोविड का टीका लगाया जा चुका है और इसके लिए कुल 41 हजार 599 सत्र आयोजित किए गए हैं कुल 28 राज्यों में आज टीका करण सत्र आयोजित किए गए और आज सारे देश में 2 लाख 99 हजार 299 लोगों को COVID ka tika lagaya gaya. Briefing the media, Additional Health Secretary Dr. Manohar Agnani informed that 16 cases of hospitalization following COVID-19 vaccinations have been reported in the country. However, no deaths have been linked to COVID-19 vaccinations so far. India is conducting nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive uh, since the 16th of January. सारे देश में अब तक 23 लाख 28 हजार 789 लोगों को कोविड का टीका लगाया जा चुका है और इसके लिए कुल 41 हजार 599 सत्र आयोजित किए गए हैं कुल 28 राज्यों में आज टीका करण सत्र आयोजित किए गए और आज सारे देश में 2 लाख 99 हजार 299 लोगों को COVID ka tika lagaya gaya. Meanwhile, the Indian Council of Medical Research has said that Covaxin has the ability to neutralize the UK variant of coronavirus. It has said that the vaccine has equivalent immunogenicity against the UK variant and circulating strains of SARS-CoV-2 in India. Covaxin is India's first indigenous COVID-19 vaccine developed in collaboration with the ICMR and the National Institute of Virology. The vaccine is currently undergoing phase 3 trials and is being used as part of the nationwide vaccination drive for healthcare workers. Here's a look now at the COVID-19 infections in the country. India reported 12,689 new infections in the past 24 hours, taking the nationwide tally to over 1 crore 6 lakh. The country's active cases fell to 1.76 lakh, comprising just 1.65% uh, of total positive cases. 137 deaths were reported in the same period, taking the death toll due to the disease to 1,53,724, with 13,320 recoveries in the last 24 hours. India's total recoveries have crossed 1 crore 3 lakh. The recovery rate has improved to 96.91%. Over 5.5 lakh samples were tested on Tuesday. With this, India has tested over 19 crore 36 lakh samples so far. Meanwhile, global coronavirus uh, cases have surpassed 100 million and more than 2.1 million people have lost their lives to the virus. Well, Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan has said that engagement with multiple stakeholders is important to check is important to check the spread of misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccination program. Addressing the 148th session of the WHO Executive Board on Tuesday, Vardhan said 2020 was the year of discovery for COVID-19 vaccines. He added that this year's challenge before the world is to inoculate the people who most need it. 
Dr. Harshwardhan urged uh, member states to work together through the COVAX facility to ensure early and equitable availability of COVID-19 vaccines for all. At a time when we <coughs> all understand that there are going to be many urgent health challenges in the next two decades, we have formed a common cause with a renewed determination to work together and ensure that nothing and simply nothing can stop us from moving towards universal health care for all. Well, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday spoke to the new U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin and conveyed his warm wishes on his appointment. Both leaders reiterated their firm commitment to deepen India-U.S. Defense Corporation. Uh, they also exchanged views on regional and global issues of uh, mutual interest to strengthen strategic partnership. A memorial for late Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J. Jayalalitha was inaugurated in Chennai by Chief Minister K. Palani Swami on Wednesday. Spread over 50,000 square feet, the structure is built at a cost of 79.75 crores alongside uh, the Marina Beach in Chennai. The state government had earlier earmarked 50 crore rupees for constructing the Phoenix-themed memorial for Jayalalitha. The Tamil Nadu cabinet decided to construct a memorial for their party supremo soon after her demise in February 2016. Chief Minister Edapaddi uh, Palani Swami laid the foundation of the giant structure in May 2018. Well, expelled AIA DMK leader and close aide of former Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Jayalalitha VK Shashikala, was uh, released from a Bengaluru prison on Wednesday after serving four years in prison. She will, however, remain in hospital in Bengaluru as she is being treated for COVID-19. Shashikala was in prison since February 2017 in connection with the 66 crore rupees disproportionate assets case. A release from prison comes close to assembly elections in Tamil Nadu due in April-May this year, but she is barred from contesting elections for another six years as per the representation of the People's Act of 1958, which disqualifies a person if convicted under the Prevention of Corruption Act. And uh, that's it on this edition of the newscast. But before we leave, Rajya Sabha TV would like to make an appeal to all its viewers to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. Remember to wear face masks, wash your hands and face regularly and also maintain physical distancing while stepping outside. These simple precautions are all that it takes to defeat the pandemic.